The religion of Islam is comprehensive and complete. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established the rules and regulation of safety and security for people in their lives, in their livelihoods, in their properties and belongings, and in their surroundings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly stated that there are rules and regulation for each and every situation in life. This is perfected and completed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, and the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. Truth in every information that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about or tells you, it is 100% true. And justice in every rule and order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to do or ask you to abstain from, it is in full justice. And now when we are speaking about full justice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no favor of anybody over anybody else. We are all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, there are important goals, major goals that must be protected at all times. Those are the pillars of livelihood, of security and coexistence in Islam. And that is why we find different rules in Islam in such situations. In the beginning, the most important thing is peace and security. This is provided and guaranteed. Peace, security, coexistence. This is one of the most important goals in Islam. Many of the rules and regulations in Islam that we find came to protect these goals. So many of them just to protect this peace, security, safety, and coexistence for all people. Alhamdulillah, this is great. However, establishing peace and security needs power to protect it as well. So it cannot just be by words. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also ordered us to prepare for in case there is a need to defend that peace and security. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Holy Quran to be careful and take precautions. O ye who believe, take precautions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Prepare. Because when a problem strikes or a terrorist strikes, if you are not prepared, you'll be in deep trouble. And many people will be affected. And most of them, if not all of them, will be civilians. And that is why you have that, you need that power to protect that peace and security. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers in the Holy Quran, ordered us to prepare whatever type of power that we can. Prepare it. Take precaution, prepare yourself. Don't, don't assault people. Don't start an enmity ever. Don't attack as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. But defend yourself if you are attacked. There are problems, don't be also cowards. So be lazy. So you have to have that balance and moderation all the time. Yes, you seek peace. It is the most important and most fundamental goal in Islam. Yes, true. But at the same time, you should take precaution to defend that peace when there is a need. When the need comes, you are prepared. And here, we find in the Holy Quran some of the rules regarding such situations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed fighting to defend the oppressed, allowed fighting to remove injustice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believers that when tyranny strikes them, they defend themselves. Yes. You are powerful, you are still a weak person. Yes, you seek peace and everything, but you are not weak. When there is a need, you have to defend those achievements. You have to defend these goals. So when tyranny strikes, you have to defend yourself. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the Holy Quran, when anyone attacks you with tyranny, then attack him back. Defend yourself. Don't stop there. However, do not be oppressors. You are not the oppressor. You are a defender. You have to defend that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he allowed this, 
When he allowed defending the oppressor, when he allowed defending the oppressed, when he allowed defending uh, those who are uh, being dealt with unjustly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to stand up against the oppressor, against the one who is doing injustice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the same surah, in the same ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not take it as a, a chance to re take revenge, to retaliate. That is not the goal. The goal is to stop injustice. The goal is to remove oppression. That is the whole idea. Restore peace and security again. So that, that, that chance or that exception is given to you with this criteria, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows those who fear. Do not just stand up to defend your own or your own self or your own uh, ego or, or whatever, something that is illegal in Islam. No. You stand up, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, cooperate, help one another in goodness and in justice. Good deeds, just, justice, yes, help one another. But do not help one another in oppression and injustice and wrongdoings, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran. So you have that limit and those uh, guidelines. Now, uh, we have some uh, uh, guidelines or, so, or some examples uh, in the life of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because, you know, one aspect in Islam is to have wisdom. And one of the highlights of wisdom is to put each thing in its appropriate place. It is very important to forgive and to be patient and not to retaliate and give a second chance and a third chance, etc. all the time. Yes, this is great. But there are times when this doesn't work and you should not refer to that. For example, given a second chance or forgiveness is someone who's, who does a mistake, someone who does a crime or something and then he regrets it, someone who comes back, someone who is asking for a, a chance, someone who returns back to peace. Yes, fine, I was going to tell you, by all means, do that. Okay. However, if someone is a tyrant, and an oppressor, and he is proud of that, and he's not stopping, and he is continuing and expanding with this injustice and oppression. What to do? Forgive him and give him a second chance? No! That will not be wise at all. That will be the exact opposite of wisdom. Here, wisdom asks you or guides you to do something totally different. Stand up and stop him. That is why in Islam, actually, given the oppressor, who is a tyrant and an arrogant one, Giving him a chance or forgiving him is something that is disliked in Islam. That is not a good thing to do. Forgiveness in such a case? No, you are actually supporting him or helping him do more injustice. That is wrong. This is not the person that deserves to be given a second chance. They have to stand up until he realizes his mistake and he comes back to his senses. That is when it is desirable to give him a chance. But when he is an arrogant at that time and doing all kind of injustice, no. That is when you have to take decisions. That is when you have to stand up against him and stop him. We have examples in the life of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was the most peaceful, most forgiven person at all. Throughout his life, he never ever retaliated for himself, not even once. Never. Never took revenge for himself, not even once. Never hit anybody. Except to him fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never! Not any man, not any woman, not any child, not any slave, nobody at all. That was the mercy and forgiveness of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, when there was time to take decisions, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a strong man, taking very serious and strong decisions to protect public safety and security. We have one clear example that happened at the time of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A group of people came to visit the Medina. They met with the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but soon after they became sick in Medina. Feverish, with different kind of sickness. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them to go to the camels of charity, where the camels of charity are collected, and told them to drink from them. So they went there, they drank from it, they stayed there for a few days, they became well, alhamdulillah. They were relieved from their sickness. However, now shaitan is starting to play with their minds. Here they are at the age of Medina. Nobody, no security, there's a safe in heaven. And they have lots of camels around. Nobody with them, except some 
sheep herds. Very few people taking care and feeding the camels and giving them water. That's all. So Shaitan started playing with them. Then they thought of stealing the camels. Of them. So they went to the sheep herds and killed all of them. Then they took all the camels and escaped. What to do? Forgive? This is the time of forgiveness. So those are the camels that belong to the poor and needy throughout the Medina. And this is what they did after being helped by the Zero Asa and those people. So the Messenger Muhammad sent envoys behind them till they caught them and they brought them back and the Messenger Muhammad asked them to apply the punishment on them. All of them. The capital punishment. All of them. Taking a very swift decision to protect their peace and security. Had you forgiven them, for example, they will increase. They will do it again and again and again and repeatedly. So here are some times when the matters of public safety and security has been attacked. You need different decisions and swift ones to protect that. Because here the benefit of all the society belongs with that. The protection of all their property and belongings. The protection of all the achievements that they have done. The protection of all progress and doing. Because unless you have peace and security, you cannot achieve anything. We have another example at the time of Ali radiallahu anhu. There are so many examples throughout history, but we are just taking some glimpses. We will uh, suffice, inshallah, with this one. At the time of Ali radiallahu anhu, there was a group of people in the very beginning. There were just few. And they came up with some radical ideas at the time. And some of the Sahaba actually asked Ali radiallahu anhu to take swift decision against them. They said, no, they're just ideas, those people. So we we'll try to reason with them, give them a chance and try to speak with them wisely. So he, Ali uh, sent some uh, people to speak with them and they succeed with some of them, not all of them. And some of them came back to their senses. So many of the scholars of the Sahaba, they went there and tried to discuss it with them. But the rest, they became even worse. And from just an idea that they started becoming like uh, tyrants and oppressors. They started attacking people, attacking uh, envoys, caravans, stealing poor people, shedding the blood everywhere. Most like many of the terrorists are doing nowadays. It just became a very big powerful power to reckon with. And they were disturbing the peace and security throughout the land. That is when Ali decided to take a swift decision. This is not the case now anymore. Diplomacy. It's not working with these people. So Ali decided to attack them. And all the Sahaba at the time were behind Ali at the time. And they stopped it at once. So that is when there is a difference between giving a chance and diplomacy and peace and talks, which is very good. But it's when it's not working, you have to take a decision. That is the difference between uh, these, and that is the beauty of Islam, of the uh, comprehensiveness of Islam, and the completeness of all rules and regulation, and the balance and moderation, and the wise application of each one in its own place, in its appropriate place. That is the idea. Let's uh, all uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us peace and security uh, and everything, because as the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu said, this is the basis for every blessing in this world. The Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who is feeling peace and security in his dwellings, feel <coughs> peace, security in your home, in your uh, society, in your area, in your work, around you, that is criteria number one. And he is uh, finding feed, that is the food that you have for your the sustenance for the day, for today only. You have food with you, enough for you and your children and your family. Alhamdulillah, criteria number two. And third one, you have a shelter to stay in. You have place. You have a cover from the sun and from the heat and the cold. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi says, anyone who has these three things, it is as if he owns the whole world. What else do you want from this world? I said, these are the basics in this world. If you have them, the rest are just luxuries. So here, alhamdulillah, we are feeling this peace and security and many uh, countries around us also, but there are other countries that are lacking in this. And there are oppressors and those who are doing injustice uh, there. And there is a swift decision now being taken. And as the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, those who are in charge, they, they take a decision. As the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, those are the shield, as a shield, as protection. Protection from enemy outside and protection from injustice within the society. You could, your brother or your neighbor or somebody else do a crime or do an injustice or attack you or harm you. Where do you go? Do you take the law by your hand? Or do you go to the law? So that is it. See, he is the shield. He is the protection. As the Messenger of said, you fight behind him. 
and you are protected from injustice from outside and from within inside by him through that that is the importance of it in Islam he is appointed by Allah by, 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 by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this rank for what he's given these priorities for what not for his own benefits that is for the benefits of the public because doing the most important aspect of protecting peace and security on the global scale on the public scale not on the personal one that is where this comes from. That is why some people sometimes are, are wondering why Islam has given this prominence to leaders. It is not for any favor for them. No. In fact, the Messiah Muhammad said, as a leader, if he does good for people and he seeks the welfare of people, he will be given twice the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's randomly multiplied. He's trying to help people and do the best for them. Great, alhamdulillah. If he's not doing that, he will be asked about each and every one of them. As Umar radiallahu anhu said, in the, the, even he says, I fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask me if a sheep tripled in a road near the banks of the river of Dijla in Iraq at that time. He was in Medina. He says, I fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell me why you didn't, why you didn't took care of that road for it or Umar. That is an animal. But still, you are in charge now. This is your responsibility. Why you are you are called a person who is in charge? In charge what? That is your duty. So that is why that is why this level or this level is being taken uh, or given that prominence in Islam to protect the public safety and the public security. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect peace and security for all of us. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala help those who are fighting for a justice cause and those who are trying to stop injustice and oppression. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect the Muslims from all tyranny and from all injustice. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala unite the Muslims on those who guide them to the benefit and welfare in this world and in the hereafter. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala return them back safe and safety, in safety, safe and sound. Inshallah to their families. Amen. Allahumma amin. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.